a letter to Captain Ahab. After everyone has left, I will find my father standing in the center of the detached garage you built with your sons in the 70s, staring at toolboxes stacked on shelves. This is where we built the Pinto, he'll say. You rebuilt a Ford Pinto with my dad in 1982, and he talks about it all the time. He's tried similar projects with me, without success. Maybe it's because I'm not a boy. You must not realize how much he loved working on the Pinto with you, or else you might have done another project with him. Your garage will be closed in and immaculate. When I was seven, I was scared of roaches when I took out the trash at our house, but now when I'm 18, I will wonder how your trash cans are still so shiny even after you have not scoured them in months. Pop really liked building that car with you, I will say. I will be speaking for you. I know you don't like people telling you what to do. Please forgive me. It will be for your son. You know, you just have to hold on to the time you have, Dad will say. Did Pop tell you he was proud of you when you were working on the Pinto? I'll ask. It will feel like a violation. No. He's not very demonstrative. Dad will wrinkle his nose. I don't know, he'll say. When we leave, your house will fade into Skyview Terrace behind our car. It will be drained, cold, and strange, like a body. In the morning, strips of sunlight will filter into your kitchen like orange slices and fall across your unused blender on the counter. There's a color photograph of you by a camper in one of our slideshows. The picture is from the year you and Honey quit your jobs and drove your five kids around the US in an RV for 12 months. That year, my father was six, and you forgot you were an engineer. You wear a plaid shirt in the picture, and your hair waves to your shoulders. You look like honey and coffee, bright, weathered, and warm. I would like to meet that man. <laughs>